I can't see you, but I hope you can hear me. Mm -hmm. um, I am Dawn Johnson. I am the violist in the String Queens. Um, I'm also a DCYOP um, chamber music coach, sectional coach. And so DCYOP has a very special place in my heart. I'm very excited to be here with you all this morning um, for this masterclass, which is primarily designed to just make sure um, you all are receiving positive feedback about your playing, about your practice, about your performance. And I'm really excited to get started and hear you guys play this morning. Good morning, everybody. I'm Kendall Isidore. I'm the violinist um, from the String Queens, originally from Houston, but I've been living uh, wonderfully in the wonderful city of Washington, DC for the last 14 years. Um, and I get to work almost every day uh, with Ms. Don Johnson and also you all's teacher, um, Mrs. Sharp. And so I'm just excited to hear you all today, excited um, for you to just present yourselves um, as the awesome musicians that you already are. And if Don and I can um, give you some feedback that can take you even to the next level, um, this is not meant to you know, take away from the other feedback you've gotten from private teachers or um, your conductor in uh, youth orchestra, but just to add to it and enhance your playing as much as we can. So do we have a first um, performer coming up? Great. Is there a way to see them at all or is it just audio? I think we're going to briefly make them into panelists. Okay. And so you should be able to see them and hear them and then we'll take them back out. Um, and so for anyone performing, um, something that's very important um, when we perform is how we present ourselves even before we set ourselves up to play our instruments. So if you are performing this morning, um, can you just introduce yourself, uh, maybe say your age, the instrument that you play, the piece that you'll be performing, and tell us maybe a little something about yourself. Hi, Sadie. Oh, they're on mute. <laughs> Good. Start my video. Okay. There we go. Awesome. Hi. Hi. How are you? How are you? How are you? Good. How are you today? Good. Thank you. So, um, would you like to introduce yourself and let us know what you'll be playing this morning? Uh, sure. Okay. Where's your music? Oh, my name's Zadie. I'm in level C with Miss Sharp. Right. So, yeah, I just got off the other class, so uh, I, it ran a little late, so. Okay, can you speak up a little bit, Zadie? Yeah. Um, yes, today I'll be playing Etude. Um, okay. Yes. Can I start, or? You Whenever you're ready. <laughs> or bowing in this piece. Yeah, yeah. Um, I completely agree with everything um, that you just said. I thought your intonation was great, especially when you were on the G, the D, and the A string. I'm not sure if your C string is all the way in tune. Do you know how to tune your C string at all? It's a little low. No, okay, don't worry about it then. Um, but I really thought your hand position looked great. Um, I could hear every note very clearly, um, but I will like to push you in the direction of having much more 
dynamic contrast. So that means playing um, things that are louder, a little louder, right? And playing, um, when you play something over again, making sure the second time you play it, it's a little softer than the first time that you played it, okay? So can we take it maybe right from the beginning? And I want you to play that whole first statement for 10. Okay. <laughs> right to the place where it repeats itself right so now play this a little softer crescendo there. So we'll start this crescendo. Yeah. So play a little bit before that and I want you to really get louder and louder when you build up to that climax. Bum 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 bum. All right. And as you do that, start to use a little more bow so you can get a little more sound. <laughs> when I sang that? Well, you got louder and then you got uh, softer. When what? did I get softer? Well, you got softer when like it was the end of the scale, more or less. Yeah, so when the scale starts to go down or the scale is descending, get a little softer. And when the scale starts to ascend, get a little louder. Can you play that section one more time? <laughs> Um, I actually wanted to hear her sort of put these ideas together, but I did have a question for you, Zadie. Um, what, what do you think you just created by um, when you were ascending in the scale and you crescendoed? What do you think that that created? What, what did it sound like to you, even if you thought of it as like a story? Um, how could you, how would you describe that? Yes, and so if you think of it as, like you said, a mountain, um, what would it be like if you went hiking on that mountain and everything was just sort of on the same level and there were no mountains? How would you feel? Would it, would it be in as interesting? It would, it would just be a walk. It would be just hiking. I mean, walking is great, but it's very simple. Yes, awesome, awesome. Do you want to try to put these ideas together? Maybe you want her to start from the beginning, Don? Sure, that would be great. So Zadie, stop before you start. Take a deep breath. Make sure you have your bow placed on the string calmly before you start. Okay, so whenever we go into perform, we never just want to sort of feel rushed to start or throw the bow on the string and just feel like we have to start right away. Take a deep breath. Set yourself up. Set your position up. Get your bow on the string. Place the first note down and then you may begin.
Well done, Zadie. Great job. Thank you for playing for us this morning. Um, we'd love to give you more feedback, but I know we have other um, students who will be playing as well. So um, keep practicing. Make sure you're working on making sure your intonation and your fingers are always playing the correct pitches. And if you can, um, maybe try to get your teacher or if one of your parents know how to do it, just get your C string tuned up a little bit. So when you're practicing, you have your lowest string in tune, okay? Awesome job. Thank you. Nice job. Bye. Do we have a... Oh, Aiden's playing, <clears throat> playing Gavat. Awesome. Oh, Martini Gavat. Aiden, Aiden was next. This one. You can, if Aiden's next, like, then that's the video. Yeah. 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 Hi, I love these dresses. Yes. Love it. How are you guys doing today? Aiden, are you playing first? I can't. Are, is someone talking? I couldn't hear anything. Let's see if they're muted. No, they're unmuted. Oh, there we go. Wait, Aiden, before you play, before you play. Can you introduce yourselves to us? Um, anytime, uh, even when Ms. Johnson and I play, before we play, the audience is usually wondering what you're going to play um, and who you are. So can you introduce yourselves to us? I'm Aiden. I'm Addison, and I'm going to be playing Telamar and G Major. Addison, this was the first viola concerto that I ever learned. So I was telling Miss Lucy earlier, it has a very special place in my heart and I can't wait to hear you play it. Thank you. 
right. Thank you, Addison. How did that feel to you? I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Good. Oh, good, good, good. What do you think you did really well? Dynamics? Uh-huh. And what do you think were, um, what do you think is something that you could have maybe done a little bit better? The cadenza. What'd you say? The cadenza. The cadenza. Okay. All right. I thought you did a pretty good job overall. Good job. So what key is this first movement of the Telemann Viola Concerto in? What key are you in? I think it even says it in the title. G major. G major. So can I ask you to do something really quickly? Can you just play a G major scale with nice long bows? One octave or two octave? Whatever you feel comfortable with. I can't hear anything. <laughs> too low because the way your wrist is positioned it's pulling all of your fingers back so drop your wrist down and play on your fingertips okay try that again G major <laughs> Your intonation was up Already better. 100 mm -hmm. times better, okay? So when you're practicing, Addison, make sure you're always focusing on keeping your wrist down and not letting it come like this. We call this a, a waiter. You know how a waiter walks around with the tray in a restaurant? So no waiters, okay? Make sure you drop that wrist all the way down, okay? Um, the second thing that I wanted to point out with your telemon is you have this pattern all throughout the first movement of a dotted quarter note. Am I correct? The dotted quarter note connected to an eighth note and then a half, right? Okay, so whenever you're playing that dotted quarter note, make sure you're always feeling three eighth notes underneath it, okay? So da, ba, ba, ba. Ba, 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 ba. And is this Aiden sitting behind you? Yes. Aiden, can you do me a favor since you're in the same room as her? She's going to start from the beginning. Right when she starts at the beginning, can you just tap on your chest gently three times? Okay, whenever she sees that dotted quarter note, I need you to tap on your chest three times. Ba, 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 ba. Ba, ba, ba. All right, let's go ahead and try that. <laughs> so, Addison, Addison, let's try that second one again. The first one was great. The second one you held a little too long, okay? Make sure right after that third clap, you change to the next note. Try it again from the top. Okay. 
Excellent. Stop right there. So the reason I asked you to do that is because you want to make sure that because this pattern or a motif happens all throughout the movement, rhythmically, you want to make sure it's accurate every single time. Okay. And when you have um, Aiden there with you, Aiden, if you don't mind, um, you can always help out by just tapping those three eighth notes underneath the dotted quarter note. Or yes, Addison, if you don't have, I mean, obviously you can't tap your chest and play at the same time, but you can tap your foot three times. Ba, 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 ba. All right. Don, can I chime in one thing? Absolutely. Absolutely. I can't tell. Addison? So before you start the piece, so one, so one thing since Don has already given you some great feedback when you're practicing with your left hand, when you're practicing, particularly something you already have memorized, like a scale, I would love for you to get in front of a mirror um, so that you can see your left hand position, but also so that you can see your right hand position. So, so Addison, just really quickly, what I'm seeing now, when you're drawing your bow to a down bow, your arm is kind of coming back a little bit. And so instead of sort of making a, a straight down mm -hmm. movement, yours is kind mm -hmm. of just ever so slightly going behind you. Yeah. And so when you're practicing, particularly something that you already have memorized, I would love to see you get in front of a mirror so that you can clearly see what we see. Because Don and I won't always be with you, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. Awesome. Great job, Addison. Excellent. Um, Aiden, would you like to play? Yes. All right. <laughs> Playing Martini Gavat. Yes. Excellent job, Aiden. Aiden, can you move more towards the center of the camera so we can see your full um, position? Okay. Awesome job. What do you think went well about your playing? It was wonderful. Oh, can you speak up a little bit, Aiden? The rhythm. Oh, the rhythm. OK, OK. Um, anything else you thought went well? There was a lot to celebrate there. Okay, what do you think is something that um, you want you would want to improve on? Something that you could do better the next time when you play? The dynamics. Okay, the dynamics. Um, I want to give you some feedback. I thought for well over 95% of the time when you were playing, um, 
your intonation uh, was was very good in, in many, many places. And then I love your tone, the, the, the tone of your violin that you're bringing out. I think if I could give you some feedback, um, you remind me a lot of myself, Aiden, because when I would be given pieces, I would want to play them as fast as possible. If, if the tempo was allegro, or, or you know, something around that, that, that area, I would wanna play it as fast as possible. So the first thing I'm gonna ask you to do is start the piece again, and I'm gonna ask that you slow down a little bit, um, just so that we can get the full richness of each and every note, instead of just sort of playing them to, to just read them across the page. The other thing I want you to do when you slow down, particularly when you get to passages, um, when you play quarter note, eighth, eighth, I actually want you to use more bow on the eighth notes. So instead of ba ba ba, I would like you to go ba 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 and make it a little bit more smooth. Let's just play maybe the first, maybe just the first four measures. Then take it about ba 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 da ba da da ba ba. And Aiden, with the tempo, before you get started with the tempo, do you know what a gavotte is? A dance. It's a dance, right? And um, it's usually a French dance. And so I want you to, to have this picture in your head before you get started of people being able to dance. Yum, bum, ba, yum, yada, ba, 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 yada, ba, ba. So always feel that internal pulse of that buoyancy, something to be able to dance to, okay? It's all right. Nice. Can you now just play, um, when you go into your second, no, your third, your second full measure where you have G, F sharp, E, the quarter, eighth, eighth. So you have, um, can you start there? Good, can you do it one more time and I want you to use even more bow on the eighth notes. Very nice. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I want, did you hear Miss Dawn talking to um, Addison about her left hand and, and dropping it to make sure that we aren't looking like waiters and waitresses? Very nice, very nice. Mm -hmm. And so it's gonna be something that if you do what, I, what we asked Addison to do, which was to practice in the mirror so that you can really see what you're doing, that's really gonna help you out a lot. Dawn, feel free to chime in um, anything yeah, sure. else. You um, I'm going to ask you to do something that maybe slightly challenging, but the more you practice it, you'll get used to it. Can you actually try, I'm gonna stand up for a second, give me one second, to walk in place as you're playing. Bum, bum, ba, da, 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 ba, 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 and never let your feet stop, I, I'm, it's a march, but you're almost walking, okay? Walk in place as you're playing. And let's get that nice, that wrist dropped, just right from the start.
start to include in your practice when you're working on this piece. And if it is a little too challenging, make sure you turn on, you know what a metronome is? Yeah. It's the one that goes from, it keeps the time while you're playing. Make sure you turn on the metronome as you're practicing to make sure that you're keeping your tempo steady, okay? And there's one more thing in this piece that's really beautiful. Can you say this word after me? Chiaroscuro. Chiaroscuro? Say it one more time. Chiaroscuro. Chiaroscuro. Yeah. So chiaroscuro means light right next to dark, right? So it opens up very bright. Everything's nice and major. But then you have these minor dark sections that kind of creep in into this piece. And so make sure you're showing the difference here between the light and the dark in the sound that you're producing when you go from the major sections to the minor sections, okay? All right. Um, how are we doing on time, guys? So two minutes left for uh, comments, okay. Okay, um, do you wanna just play this opening phrase for us one more time? <laughs> Good. And then this next section coming up was the minor dark section. Can you just play a little bit of that minor section? Maybe a little softer even? <laughs> Stop right there for just a second. Of all the notes you just played in the minor section, which one of those notes does not belong in this happy key that we started with? B flat. The B flat. That's the special note. We call that the blue note, right? That's the blue note. So play it one more time. Bum, bum. And I really want you to lean on the B flat. Bum, bum. Ha, da, 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 bum. Cry through the B flat. Not literally cry, but make the note cry. <laughs> Excellent. Just make sure the last one is a B natural because now it's coming back into the happy place, okay? Excellent job. We have to go, Aiden, but it was awesome working with you and Addison today. We'll see you soon. Bye. Great job, ladies. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. And you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Um, can you just let us know your name, what instrument you play, and what you'll be playing for us today? Hi, I'm Arjeni Mattel Lopez from the Debut Orchestra, and I play cello, and I will be playing Ode to Joy. Excellent. Before you even play, I can't wait to hear what you're going to play just from that introduction you gave us. So thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs>
I messed up. I'm sorry. That is just fine. And guess what? If you didn't say anything that you messed up, I would have never known. So can you try that again? And even if you make a mistake, maybe we didn't hear it, okay? So go ahead and play that last section again. And if you mess up, nobody knows but you, okay? You got it. Okay, cool. Um, so how did that feel overall? It felt great. Excellent. It felt great. And what made it feel so great? That I had courage to tell I had a mistake, but then I didn't give up. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Anything about your, your playing that you did otherwise felt great? Um, yeah. Okay. Because um Normally, sometimes when I'm very nervous, mm -hmm. when, I, when I'm playing the note, I actually move my finger from like down or usually goes up. Mm. This time, since I had faith, um, my finger stayed there in place. Excellent. And I thought you did a great job keeping your fingers on the tape as well. And because you did that, almost every single note that you played was perfectly in tune. So excellent job with that. Um, what is um, one thing maybe that you thought you could do a little bit better? Maybe practice the song a little bit more. Okay, how are you going to practice it? My are you just going to play it over and over again or are you going to focus on little things? I'm going to study the song and make notes and the music and then I'm going to know what to do when the part comes. Great, great. Have you heard this piece before? Yeah. Okay, do you know who the composer is who wrote the piece? Um, Luan van Beethoven. Excellent, so Beethoven wrote this piece. Do you know, now this question is a little bit harder. Do you know which one of his symphonies this comes from? No. Okay, so this comes from Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, okay? At this point, Beethoven, do you know that Beethoven was deaf? He went deaf? No. Yeah. So at this point in his life, Beethoven couldn't even hear anything anymore. And so in this symphony, this is the very last movement of the symphony. Or have you ever heard a symphony with a choir? Yes. Yeah. So Be Beethoven uses a choir here. He has soloists. He has the orchestra. Literally every part of the orchestra is playing as loud as they can with all of the bow that they can. The, uh, they can. the singers are singing beautifully. And when you hear it all come together, it creates this very joyous, it's about joy, um, this very wondrous place. So can you try starting from the beginning again? And before you even start, I want you to, to feel a happiness and a feel of a sense of joy in your soul before you even start to play, okay? Okay. All right, let's take it from the beginning. <laughs> That was, that was great, okay? Now, something that can really help you get an even bigger sound is right now you're using, I hope you can see me, you're using about this much bow. I want you to go from using just a little bit of bow to using your entire bow. I really want you to go from frog to tip 
tip to frog and let's play it a little slower so you can see what that feels like. Okay. Okay. <laughs> someone a teacher or an instrument shot or someone in your family who can tune your cello your strings are about a, um, a whole step too low right now um, and so I see your finger going down your third finger on the D string going down on F sharp but the note that it's producing is an E okay so I, I don't want you to train your ears to hear pitches that are not accurate, especially when you're putting your fingers down in the correct place. So um, for almost as soon as you can get this taken care of, just ask someone, an adult, a teacher, a, a, someone, an instrument shop that you go to, if they can tune your cello for you. Okay. Okay, Miss um, Kenny, did you have any feedback? He's a yes. wonderful I'm enjoying your playing so much. Arhenis, did I say that correctly? Yes. Okay, um, so another thing that we want to add to our playing, um, especially because many parts of this sort of theme, this ba da da, it repeats um, many times, right? And the audience remembers that part every time. Every time, or, or at least, yeah, every time that we play that part, we almost want to play it a little bit differently. But what does it sound like when you first start that part? Da 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 da. What that you practice normally sounds like that. It sounds like a, based on how the notes move up and down. Sounds like a trumpet. It, okay, it sounds like a trumpet, but like, you know, when we, before we just start playing the pieces we're working on, a lot of times you do a warm up, and what do you do to warm up? You do normally a what? A scale. A yeah. scale, excellent. And so when we start this piece, da, 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 as we're going sort of up the scale, what if we did a, a little bit, added a little bit of dynamics? You said you really enjoyed your dynamics, and I did too. What if we did a little bit of a crescendo when we played this, almost like, and then, so it's almost like a, you're going up a mountain, da, 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 and come down a little bit. Can you try that? Okay. Right from the beginning. Pause really quick, really quick. So we want to start almost even quieter than that so that we have somewhere to go. If we start a little too loud, that we get to the mountain almost too quickly. Why don't we start a little softer? Same thing here. All right, let's stop right there. Actually, it, um, I, I heard the choir. Miss Dine said that there was a choir involved. Did you hear it, Miss Dine? I did. And um, we're running out of time for you, but wonderful, wonderful playing. Keep going. Don't stop practicing. And today, may I give you a homework assignment, please? Yes. Listen to the last movement of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. Okay. All right. Excellent job. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. Have a good day.
You too. You too. Thank you. So sweet. I know. <laughs> I love it. Manner. Oh my gosh. Yes. Hello. Hi, Maria. How are you today? I'm good. You? I'm great. I'm fantastic. Yes. Who are you uh, playing for us today? Can you introduce yourself? I'm Maria, and I'm going to be playing Sonata in C major on a cello. And uh, right now I'm in Portugal. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was in Portugal. <laughs> That's so cool. Are you having a good time? Yeah, I went to the beach today. Lovely. And I love that you have your cello with you and you're practicing and you're attending a master class. So <laughs> awesome job to you already. <laughs> All right, so feel free to get started whenever you're ready. Take a deep breath and we can't wait to hear you play. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic job. How did you uh, feel? I felt good. Yeah. Good. Um, what are a couple of things that you felt really, really good about with your playing? Um, I think when I did the scale, the the fast scale in the middle. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is that some, is that a part that you? How do you normally feel about that part? It's. Uh, <laughs> a bit hard so <laughs> <laughs> yeah what's something else you did well there's a lot to celebrate here maria um uh what about tone dynamics yeah okay and if you could improve on anything um based on what you just played what would you what would you work on what would you improve on i'd improve on the part where i do the yeah. Uh -huh. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, I that part I have to do it in four ten and in piano. Yes. And uh, usually I don't do. I only do it like the same. Mm -hmm. Understood. Understood. Um, I'll give you a little bit of feedback. I'll give you two things. Two things that I noticed. Um. When you play this, um, have you ever played this piece with a metronome? Uh, no. Okay. Only once, I don't know. Okay. So one thing that really um, helps us as um, string players and as musicians um, is to practice with a metronome. And, and you can even practice scales with a metronome, right? And so, um, so what I noticed is that as you were playing, when you got to parts that you felt really, really good about and really, really confident about, you pretty much stuck to the same tempo. As you got to some of the eighth note passages and the passages that we just talked about, you would speed up your eighth notes or slow them down or almost slow down in the piece. You would slow down the tempo to get ready for the parts that, you know, um, that you needed to work on a little bit more. So one thing I'd like you to do is to practice this one at a tempo. And Miss Don, you could chime in on what may be a good tempo for her to start with. 
um, to, to play at a slower tempo that you feel confident about where you can keep the same tempo throughout the piece so that the tempo is even across. Yeah. And yeah. something, Maria, that can um, help you with that. First of all, great job. Um, I actually um, had to familiarize myself with the score this morning. So I was following along um, as you were playing and you did a really great job. Um, but before you start any piece of music, especially a piece of music that has a fast section in it, hear the fast section in your head. And before you even know the note values you start with are half notes, they can trick you a little bit, right? Because the half notes make you want to start faster because they're longer note values, right? But I need you to hear the triplets in your head before you start and pick a tempo where you feel comfortable playing those triplets. So if you start, bium, 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 that means the triplets are da -da 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 right? But if you hear how fast you can play those triplets in your head, then you can play dum, bum, bum. And if you have a metronome going, you won't start to speed up because you get, we all, it's not just, we all get a little nervous when we see the fast part coming up. Um, my teacher, God bless her soul, she just passed away. Um, she used to call sections like this the killer section. And she called it the killer section because it's the hardest section that you play in the piece. Do you agree? Yes. Yes. So before we even start at the beginning, can you just play the triplet section at the tempo that you feel comfortable enough to play it correctly with the right note? Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, so first of all, um, the, where the measure where you just started, where you go from G, G, right? The first note is what? Is it a triplet or is it a quarter note? Uh, it's a quarter note. It's a quarter note. But on the second beat is where the triplets start, right? So yeah. the tempo you just played for me, da, ba, 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 that means my tempo is one, two, three, four. So the first note is da, da, da. You're getting to the triplet too soon before the second beat, okay? So give the first beat its full length, ba, 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 and start the triplets on the second beat. Your score has the triplets starting on the second beat, correct? Yeah. Okay, so let's take that measure. <laughs> That was the first time I got a clear sense of the triplets. And it might even help to put a little accent on the first of every three. Ba, da, ba, ba, da, ba, 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 ba. So that way you don't get lost in the beats and the measure, okay? Um, and I know we're gonna run short on time, so um, practice in that way. When Ms. Kendall was asking you something that you thought you could do a little bit better, um, you said the part where you had these string crossings, right? Bum, 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 where you have to sort of jump from the lowest string to the highest string and back down, and, and it makes everybody feel a little rattled. But make sure you aren't letting your bow beat your fingers, okay? Make sure you're placing your fingers down, then moving the bow. Can you play those eighth notes slowly? Okay. <laughs> Stop right there. So, bomb. Make sure you have that, uh, the B down before you move your bow to play. Okay. Stop right there. Did you hear the difference, Maria? Yeah. It was so much cleaner, okay? And I could hear every note very, very clearly, okay? The last thing I wanted to point out to you um, before we wrap up is a sonata. Are you playing this by yourself? No, you're supposed to, you're supposed to have a piano. Yes, yes. So you're actually, when you perform this piece, you're going to be playing with someone else. You're going to be playing with a pianist. And so before you start, right, and I know you have all of these triple stops in the beginning, I want you to focus on the line of the triple stop. So breathe, 
Yum, bum, bum. Can you just play the top note of the triple stop? No notes that come underneath it. And the reason I say breathe is so your pianist knows when you're starting. So don't play the lower notes, just play the top note. Play C, B, C. One more time. Same concept again. Don't let the bow come too far away from the string, okay? Keep the bow very close to the string and don't move the bow until your fingers are ready. Try that again. Excellent. Now, when you start this piece and you add in the triple stops, let go of the lower notes. Play them, but don't feel like you have to sustain playing all three notes at the same time for each chord. And keep the vibrato on the top note. So yes. when you just did it, you, you just played the top note and you have your vibrato. When you do the triple stop, keep the vibrato. And that's what Ms. Dawn is just saying. Don't spend too much time on the lower notes and, and keep that beautiful, rich vibrato. Come off with the lower ones and keep that wiggle. Ms. Dawn? So this is coming straight. So right now, Maria, we hear, we hear. And we want. Okay, we just want to go to the top note. Okay. Should I do it? Sure, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> Yes, yes, that's the right idea, okay? okay? Excellent job. Keep up the good work, keep practicing, and practice outside near the beach in Portugal if you'd like. Thank you. <laughs> Thank no you. It was wonderful working with you and hearing you today. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Oh. Question. Are you, did you see the question, Don? I was looking, the, um, let's see here. Not in. For some reason, I can't scroll it. Oh, yes, I can. You got it? Okay. Uh, no, I can't. No, sorry. Oh, Sonata. <laughs> Who's it? Sonata and C. It's Sonata and C by Braval, so B R E V A L. There we go. Okay. Yes. All right. Hi. Hi, Emily. Yeah. Hi. Oh, my name's Vivian. It just says. Oh, what's your name? Vivian. Vivian. Oh, okay, okay. Nice to my see you. My mom's me. name. Oh, Emily is your mom's name. Okay. Mm. Um, could you um introduce yourself and let us know what you'll be playing today? Um, my name's Vivian, and I'm playing Dreamers by Kavalecki. Okay. Awesome. Let's get started. with your piece um, or any vibrato. measures or say it again um the vibrato the vibrato awesome miss don you want did you want to oh excuse me i got you yes. um and so, oh, go ahead there, no, there sure. vivian that was great thank you so much for playing you have beautiful vibrato um, your intonation, for the most part, was really well. Um, something that I kept wanting when you were playing was I wanted to know more about the character of the piece. 
Um, we heard a piece earlier um, that was called etude. And when we practice our etudes, right, we practice them to make sure our hand position is correct, to make sure our intonation is correct, vibrato, we work on all of the mechanics of how we play our instrument, right? But this piece, it's not an etude, right? It's a beautiful piece of music, and even the title, is this um, Dreamers? Yeah. Yeah, so even the title hints at some sort of emotion or some sort of thing that we do in our everyday lives, right? So can you start from the beginning and just try to portray much more character in the piece? Okay. Okay? <laughs> Right? We've been talking a lot this morning about following the direction of the line with your dynamics. So you actually have a very clear picture here of when you start, things are ascending, right? So um, Ms. Kendall gave feedback earlier to Arjunas, um, start a little softer so you have somewhere to grow dynamically and get louder. And once you reach the top of that mountain, then we come back down right, dynamically, so get a little softer. Can you take that part again from the beginning? Yeah. Good. How comfortable are you starting with your fourth finger? Um, I I think I'm pretty comfortable. With it. Pretty comfortable. Okay, so when you start, um, we've been working a lot um, with students this morning on this as well. I want you to take a deep breath. I don't want you to just sort of throw the bow on the string and, and just have the fourth finger. I want you to put the finger on the string, place the bow on the string, take a deep breath, and then begin. Okay, okay. let's try that. It was great, but I didn't see you breathe. Okay, try it again. Vivian, beautiful, beautiful. The other thing, what, what key is this piece in? Is it A minor? Are there any sharps or flats? No. Okay, I believe it's in A minor. Um, what I wanted you to do quickly um, is to play an A minor scale. And the reason I'm asking you to do this is that as I look and Miss Dawn um, and I play together in the String Queens and Miss Dawn always brings this to my attention. A lot of times we don't notice that we have a lot of tension in our left or our right hand. And I can, without even seeing you in person, it, I can tell and I can hear in your playing that you have a little bit of tension and it may be because, you know, it's like my fourth finger, right? Um, and so what I wanted you to do is play the A minor scale. You can just start on open A and go up to your third finger A on the E string. And I want you to keep your fingers, like push them down still so that we can get the notes. But I would like for you to almost put like the least amount of pressure down on the string as you can, but still make a sound. And this is going to just loosen up your hand. Can you do that for me? Yeah. And I'm gonna have you do it one more time. And just remember that when you get to the F, the first finger on the E string to make it an F natural for A minor. Nice. I want you to do it one more time. You can go even slower. I want you to take your time. Be very, very relaxed in your left and your right hand. And, and Vivian, as you're ascending in the scale, use more and more bow. So practice those dynamics even with the scale. Okay. <laughs> Even more bow, right? Almost frog to 
tip. Frog to tip, as much bow as you can, even more. Very, very, you can come down, come down the scale, come down. in your left hand how did it feel um good did you feel a little bit more relaxed yeah yeah hey so now let's have you start a little bit of the piece and i want you to try and, and this is something that you'll work on long after miss don and i have finished working with you you can work on this on your own uh but just be aware of how much tension may be in your left hand um, so that you can just relax. The music, this piece really speaks for itself. The title speaks for it. And it's obvious that the composer wanted the, the listener to feel like they were dreaming. And so you, when we're sleeping, right, we're relaxed, um, we're calm, and we're serene and peaceful, right? Yeah. But whatever colors, whatever that, you know, in your mind, whatever you envision to go with being in a dream, I want you to relax and play that. Okay. Forget to breathe when you start. Beautiful start. Go ahead, one more time. Oh, you're muted, Don. Sorry. One more piece of feedback, Vivian. Even when you start, I see your right shoulder, your bow arm, like this. Relax that shoulder. Drop that right shoulder down. Try it one more time. And then you can keep going a little bit afterwards. Okay. Keep going? Oh, yeah, keep going. when you dropped your right shoulder down. You draw really beautiful colors out of your instrument. And so I want, when you practice, play around with exploring more of those colors, okay? Excellent, okay. excellent job. You're very much on the right track. Keep up the great work. Thank you. You're very welcome. Vivian, it was wonderful working with you and hearing you today. Thank you. Keep up the great work. Thank you both so much for running the master class. It was really fun for me to listen. Oh, <laughs> cool. Thanks, so Lucy. And yeah, we're really proud of all the students who performed today. You all did a wonderful job. Yes. Great job, everybody. Just keep practicing. Um, I know, you know, people are at home for an extended amount of time now. So really take advantage of that time that you guys have with your practice. Um, set yourselves up on a routine. Set yourselves up on a schedule. Um, make sure I can share my practice routine with you all. I start, I never dive right into a piece. I always, 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 Kendall will tell you this, start my practice with scales. 
Um, scales help to set your hand position. Scales help to set your intonation. Um, also, make sure you're always practicing with a metronome, um, especially when we start to get sort of emotions come into play. Um, when we're playing, they can affect our tempo heavily. So make sure you all are practicing with a metronome to keep things steady as you're working. And your practice is your personal time. Play things as slowly as you need to um, until you feel comfortable enough to work them up to speed. Um, after I have scales, I move into my etude. So I heard someone play, um, Zadie played um, etude earlier. Um, maybe spend about 10 to 15 minutes on your etude. And the last thing you should ever be working on when you go to practice is your repertoire, is the piece of music that you're going to be playing. You want to make sure all of the foundational pieces are in place and you're working yourself up to your, the repertoire that you're playing and not just starting practice with that repertoire. The only thing I would add to that please do all of those things and record yourself, right? So as you're, you're going through and you're, you know, practicing, right, you, your natural ear hears what's going on, but we don't want to be deceived or, you know, unsure about what we, we don't have to be in 2020. We can just record ourselves. And so that you can hear yourself back and see if you like the sound that you're making, right? And, and see, and to make sure that you're playing in tune and things like that. And then Lucy, if it's okay with you, um, I don't know if we want to put it in the chat, but I want, to, want us to be available for questions if things come up as students are practicing and trying to put into place the things that we suggested for them today. Um, I don't know if you want to do the string queens down or our personal ones, but I'd like them to be able to. 